So I wanted to make a video about this a couple of days ago, um, but I'm going to just get around to it now, but it's quite important really. Because there's two main issues that I've got, well, big issues, and they're issues that are kind of like holding back everything else, and they're, I, I, I've got to get them sorted out. You know, like it's, you know, it's, there's no other option. There's no alternative. It's, they will be sorted out. They have to be, whether or not I get legal help, whether or not I have to go to court. And one of these issues is YouTube, but that's not just a problem with me. Other people are having that problem as well. It's all our problem. Um, even, I think the Australian Parliament um, and even um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., um, and I'm just putting a song out, a track out, to make a really big point out of it with some legislation, which is actually quite decent, um, helping out Robert F. Kennedy Jr., um, kind of like supporting Team Kennedy, which anyone can do if they want to. Um, and I know that Google, I know that Google, um, it's not actually been released yet. It is on Bandcamp, but not like through Amazon and Apple yet. And I know that um, Google know about it because they've just made a point out of it on their Google homepage, like done this like blind singing woman. So, and like in this, um, in this track that I'm doing, it, it's mixing and it word plays on the word blind in one of the legislations, like because illuminated devices and blind. So it, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no question about it and no doubt about it. I've had massive, huge um, arguments with YouTube up since February ongoing non-stop um it's kind of like given us a bit of condolence that you know robert f kennedy jr professor kennedy um also is having trouble with them even under like the first amendment i mean he's a lawyer he he's a lawyer he's a professional lawyer he's won legal cases on really important environmental things he's not stupid he's um a legal academic um, and why would he go to court against YouTube and the First Amendment if he didn't think that he was right? He wouldn't, um, you know. So um, it, it is a big deal, and I've just been helping find some other little bits of legislation um, which helped to make the case unquestionable, really, particularly the fact that Parliament and... Um, Congress are not helping us out at all. In fact, the Petitions Committee have now got this guy called Charles White um, as their media guy, yet we've had zero media help at all from Parliament, unless it's one of the MPs whose um, YouTube channel gets taken down and then they write to him and get put straight back up. In fact, Parliament have been hindering us by actually using 77th Brigade and Battalion to take our political material down, not put it back up. And also lying by pretending they don't know what we're asking or pretending they can't understand when it's in plain English, when it's something the government can do. And then even when, you know, just because they, they are politically opposed, you know, even though we elect them to uh, facilitate our casework through government, not oppose it. Um, they like to try and they think that it's a parliamentary debate trying to get it listed on there, trying to get it submitted. Well, no, the debates are in the chamber. You know, the debates are the debates aren't with us. We actually elect you to debate on our behalf with the other ministers, not against us, right? It's almost like, you know, if you pay a lawyer and then your lawyer would be also acting as your opposition or, your, you know, the, the party that you're opposing, you know. Um, so YouTube is a big problem. But so, I mean, it's not just me who needs to get that sorted out. It's everyone. Um, and then, the, so the other issue is 38 degrees. And, you know, it, it, the worst thing of all is that 38 degrees claim to be um, on our side, you know? 38 degrees claim to be on the side of the citizens, on the side of the students, on the side of the um, protesters, activists, you know? They are engaged. But 38 degrees are actually aiding and abetting Parliament um, by taking our rights away at the moment. They're helping Parliament take our rights away by conducting themselves as the corporate elite are who are trying to take over everything. 
So, like, you know, the corporate elite that are making up these whack, far-out, ridiculously unlawful policies and charging people money, subjecting people to ridiculous um, systems, consent, submit, accept, and then, you know, taking over phones and just using horrible software against people, uh, making user-unfriendly experiences. So 38 degrees at the moment, they're on. They're helping this corporate elite take our rights away and take over the world. Um, and I think they're being misled and negatively influenced by Parliament. And they also got a little bit of a smell of the money. They got a bit of taste for money and a taste for power, you know. And, you know, they do believe that their website is very serious. They do believe that the whole thing is very, very serious. But they've gone far, far too serious on the wrong side, not far, far too serious on the right side in upholding rights. They've actually ended up thinking it's so serious, but then they've, like, gone seriously, seriously, seriously to the wrong side to suppress rights and take them away um which gets onto the subject of what this email's about so this email is about now this is a good thing so there is something good in all this and what's good is that 38 degrees have actually made a point out of the fact that the local councils are breaking the law right um, I don't know whether they picked up on this matter from me making a fuss about it and putting a lot of material out there about it to do with Angela Ditchfield and the whole, you know, like Class E, Class F advertisements thing, the whole Town and Country Planning Act um, legislation, because I've written into them quoting that and quoting those cases um, as reference when I was raising my issue with them, which is they took the my petitions down when really they, it's, it is a legal case and they, their position is they, they are a publisher. They're publishing material. They're, they're distributing um, petitions. They're showing them to large amounts of people and facilitator, they're facilitating it, but they're not an authority. They're not parliament. They're not a local council and they're not a court, right? And they don't have any, if they want to, facilitate petitions that's up to them but if you're facilitating petitions there there are all the immunities and um requirements which are that you can't intervene in them you cannot intervene spoil um derail this american 503c or 50c3 law of illegal campaign intervention in you know elections petitions and referendums by non-profits well the petition is non-profit because it is not a company it's not a business it's not commercial you're collecting signatures to get something through government government you're not making a product or selling a product so it, it is a non-profit endeavor so it, it, it we're all non-profits when we're doing petitioning we're all we all should be tax exempt really as well um because you know it, it's it's like charitable work so now, the thing with 38 Degrees, what gets me is this. They've got staff like that Jonathan Hartley, right, who but these people are campaign experts. They are, you know, champion campaign strategists. But for who? <laughs> you know? Or for the website. For the website, yeah, but uh, they do a little bit of work for the Labour Party. They do a little bit of work for none to do a bit of work for the Tories. They'd be knocking around doing a bit of work here, a bit of work there, a bit of work for Green Party. And now, they're, though they're facilitating the petition platform and we all fund it, we all donate and give money to it, the, the odd position of these people at 38 degrees is this, which is that they, they, are, they, they are meant to be like, in, like, you know, like the BBC is um, impartial. Because if you're hosting a petitions platform and people are donating money to it, how can you use that money and like advocate, pick and choose, like, oh, we'll help this campaign or we'll help that campaign? It's basically using everyone's money to guarantee that someone gets a signature target. You know, it, it is, it is, it's, 
it, it is a, dis, a form of discrimination because you're discriminating against one campaign and, and from others. And also, the worst thing is, right, that they're sending out these emails. Now, I know that you can use their website to send messages to all the people who have signed your campaign. But I don't think this is not a campaign that I've signed. This is just a random email letter, right? And it's from... It, 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 they're issuing it as if it's from 38 Degrees, right? It, it, it's presented as if, like, this is us, 38 Degrees, emailing you, right? We are emailing you. So what they're doing is they're spreading awareness of this story and of some of their campaigners, although it, it, it kind of is on behalf of one of the campaigners. But still, um, you know, they, they are... It's very, very biased. Thirty-eight degrees is the way it's run. I mean, at least change the org. Random people can sponsor and put money into whatever petitions they want to sponsor and put money into. This picking and choosing thing is it, it, it stinks. I don't like it. It's just not fair. You know, it has no fairness to it. Particularly when some petitions, you know, when they're all in England and there are some local ones as well. You know, some people could really benefit from, you know, um, 500 signatures, let alone 10,000. Um, you know, we're not even talking of getting anywhere near like 100,000, you know. Um, and there's the whole matter of local referendums, which exists. Local referendums exist. No one ever has them. They've kind of been brushed under the carpet and hush-hushed by the government because they have... You need a very, very low amount of signatures and you can really, to get the referendum to obtain it, which is when everyone in an area um, gets asked to have an opinion, to obtain that, anyone has a right to petition His Majesty's government, any UK citizen. So all you need to do is get people's interest in an area um, or if people work in an area or use facilities in any other area, but everyone's got the right to petition the king, his majesty's government, um, the power of the mace. So, and even Wiltshire Council admit this. So if you can manage to get people interested in a county or a town in a local area, it, it, it's not very hard to really um, get equal to 5% of that electorate to show that um, it's important to people and, and force them into referendums. Now, the thing is that why have they brushed referendums under the carpet? Why have they hush-hushed them? And why is the process so mysterious, like in the Local Referendums Act? Why is it a framework to change the framework? <laughs> you know, when you can petition about any subject you want under the sun, you know? Um and the reason for that is that they kind of don't really want us to have them. Firstly, because they're kind of easy to get and it, you go above these chambers, you go above the council's decision and you, you make the decisions. The councils don't want us to make the decisions. They just want us to elect them and let them make the decisions uh, and then go by the Labour Party or Tory plan. Now, in more recent times, we've got all this strategic development, strategic planning. But who's doing these strategies? Well, this is the thing. When we've, As we've found out more and more independent companies have been bought out by bigger companies and, you know, used to have all these rules and laws, which I'm sure some still exist, like people commissioning works for the government can't make a personal gain or profit out of decisions made in the council – well, what's Rishi Sunak doing with his investments in shares? You know, it's like Nancy Pelosi um, and many other members of parliament and judges, uh, uh, MRR Buff, not and so forth. Um, and then you've got Rhys Mogg on GB News when he's not supposed to be there, when it clearly states in the law that it doesn't matter what type of programme it is, if you're an MP, you can't present, right? Even in or out of election periods and even if it... Even if it isn't, you know, it doesn't have to be misleading the public. It can only have to have a potential of misleading the public. So, um, you know, 38 degrees. So here, right, this is a matter that I raised, mainly with Angela Ditchfield, but also myself, but a lot of other extinction rebellion and just stop oil people. Because they got prosecuted for criminal damage and it's not criminal damage. Damage has to be something that is defined as damage, like 
breaks, bumps, scratches, sprains, cracks. But if something falls under the definition of an advertisement, right, it is magically an advertisement and it is dealt with under a specific act of law, the town and country planning. All matters to do with the advertisements from permissions, whether you've got permission or not permission, um, what is the advertisement, how do you fasten it on, what do you fasten it on with, because once it is an advertisement, you're not damaging anything anymore. Anything you use is to attach the advertisement because that's what advertisements are attached with. It's not aimless, senseless damage. Any um, implements used have a purpose and reason suddenly because it's for attaching an advertisement. So, you know, um, and then there's a statutory instruments. 2007 that go with it that puts out your classes including political class so it, it isn't criminal damage so no one should be charged with criminal damage the, uh, and the worst thing is that this max hill the um, director of public prosecutions of all england only second to the attorney general and then you know lord pumpernickel um Max Hill, who's meant to be a professional legal academic in charge of the joystick of the entire legal um, body of England, um, you know, this knowledgeable man of all academic, academia, precision, um, you know, um, achievement, um, is blind to two acts of law. Now, and the police chief, including Met Police Chief as well, now, are they blind because they want to be blind or are they blind because they're stupid? Are they blind because they haven't got a clue what they're doing, really, but they're at the head of the English legal system, steering the ship, controlling it all, but really they they don't really know what they're doing? Or is it the fact that they didn't want to acknowledge the two full, complete, specific, precise acts of law that deal with the exact, precise actions that are in question? Or is it they just wanted to do them? Do them! The will, where there's a will, there's a way. Bull in a china shop, we want to do them for criminal damage. Let's do them! Do them! Chief wants to do them! Chief Crown Prosecutor, Director of Prosecutions, who looks like a police chief, wants to do them. Do them. Just do them. Well, I think it's just because he just wanted to do them. And I actually believe that Angela Ditchell was set up in that um, Norfolk court. I believe that they, they set her up to do the not guilty charge so then they could take it to the high court and raise it up. And it, because otherwise, why would the Crown Prosecution Service be in a high court? Unless they could find a way to get it into the High Court, then they couldn't go to the High Court and then override all the magistrates' court decisions. Once if they, they if they got Angela Ditch, if they kicked Angela Ditchfield's um, case into the High Court and they got an order that this is criminal damage, then that means that you can't have any more magistrates' court cases um, because it's been decided in a higher court. So talk about white men can't jump um, basketball um, champion um, Max Hill, who is not a basketball champion. He's a retard, in my opinion, you know. So there's that. Now, that's to do with the prosecution side of it. So Max Hill has subverted the fundamental liberties of the realm, which is specifically set out as a criminal offence in the right to petition. In fact, it's the purpose of the entire bill. The bill exists to create the wrongdoing criminal action of not acknowledging your liberties and subverting them through prosecutions. And there are only certain figures who it's possible to achieve this feat of criminality. And that is clearly not people who have any immunity or else, it, you know, it, you won't be subverting the fundamental liberties of the realm. It's second. It, it's the next down the list from treason. So it, it's um, judges, prosecutors, um, counsellors and ministers, MPs, members of parliament, right? These are the persons who are in the privileged position to be able to subvert the liberties of the realm. And it is a criminal offence. It's illegal. And that's where it is. And that's why the Act's there. And here's a list of things that would constitute such a criminality. 
and Max Hill is flying the flag for this, um, along with the police chief officer. Well, all 30 of them, all the police chief officers, or however many there are, around 30 of them, um, they just don't care. You know, it's 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 China shop. It's it, you know, it's um, it, 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 it's Worcester Worcester wear. You know, it, it's it's just um, burn China. You know, smash it up. Let's smash it up. So you know, um, but that's the prosecution side of it. You know, and that is it, it's just you know, it, it no one's doing anything about it. Petitions committee aren't acting. Um, you know, the leader of the opposition, the Labour Party guy who was getting donor money from Just Stop Oil, millions, Keir Starmer, the human rights lawyer, does nothing, nothing, nothing. In fact, I've heard him say to, you know, these um, political par- uh, political actions, like, you know, I, I don't support it. It doesn't matter when you support it or not, Keir. You know, you can't prosecute him for it. And further to that, it's all written out in modern law anyway. So, to this, right, so you campaign because it's Class C with E and F, right? You campaign particularly, um, even more so, you see even stronger um, legislation for the fact if it's in public property because we own it, right? So, some of these... uh, 38 degrees, 38 degrees, and um, some of their petitioners, this is coming as if it's from 38 degrees. So they've gone, um, whether or not it was down to um, any effect, influence or input from me or not, they've gone and put this to the test. And this is documented kind of like this email has been sent out to probably everyone who's subscribed to 38 degrees. And I don't read all the emails because... um, I didn't always check my emails, you know. Um, it just happened to be that I saw this one because, um, you know, it, it just, not in the junk folder, but it just gets buried under stuff and I, I'm not keen on emails. So they, they've put this to the test and we know that it's illegal through the Town and Country Planning Act for the council to remove petition material. They can't obliterate it. It's the one thing they can't obliterate. They're not allowed to because you might be opposing them. So they've sprayed these QR code petitions uh, around certain parts of London in a certain area where there was going to be an event. And they've gone and watched what happened. And what happens is the council send out street cleaners and they're not just randomly cleaning the streets. They've actually gone to the exact... They're basically singling out and targeting these... um, Logos that have been sprayed, so they must have been watching them on cameras um, to even know they were there, or must, someone must have reported them, but they must be keen if they know exactly where they are, and they're removing them unlawfully. That's illegal. So, and this is, the council is directing this, well, this is the council, so it's the councillors. So again, we've got councillors, um, so we've got Pro- Director of Prosecution, prosecutors subverting the fundamental liberties of the realm, exactly as listed in the bill, in the 1688 bill. And now we've got evil councillors um, sending their minions to go remove these protected materials, you know. So it, it's straight off the Bill of Rights, you know. This this is like, you know, it, it's... I mean, at least, you know, Robin Hood was fiction, you know, Robin Hood's questionable sheriff of nottingham the bad villain this is you know the 1688 bill it's real <laughs> it's an actual act of law it's not like fictional that it happened you know we've got these villains the evil magistrates judges it, it, it's it couldn't be more real than i mean this is like this is you know this is not mythology this is really happening you know uh, but you think back then you know even, even back in history how does it happen you know, who are all these caricatures, these evil villains, you know? I mean, you know, we don't have that that in this modern day and age, you know? Oh, it's, um, it's Reese Mogg. Hello, I'm Reese Mogg. How, you know, how may I help you, you know? Um, oh, take £1,500 off of me if you want, Reese. you know, if I'll give you it, you know? E- e- Boris Johnson, the compulsive liar who has a column in the newspaper. You know, who, who are these villains, you know? Um... Well, well, these are them, these councillors. We, we could name them all. All we have to do is find out who sent them out, these street cleaners, and that's it. I mean, 
I mean, who are these these villains from history um, in the modern age? Max Hill. I mean, it's him, Max Hill. I mean, it is Max Hill, the evil um, director of prosecutions, subverting the liberties of the realm, which is, you know, the next down from treason. But yet, oh, he stepped down as he always. He can step down all he wants. It's illegal. He needs prosecuting himself. When will these people be brought to justice? You know, Cromwell had them all in court. You know, um, so so I mean, this is it. I mean, this this is one good thing that thirty eight degrees are doing, other than you know, fly by in um, and and deck in the jungle with a plane with a banner behind it. I mean, th- this is amazing evidence. I mean, this getting this evidence here of um, the council removing these protected um, signs and notices for petitions. Um, I mean, that's brilliant. That's a good thing. But, I mean, why are 38 degrees um, taking down people's protected petitions, particularly when um, it's not the people's fault if people sign them um, with dodgy sign-ups? Because, you know, you, you, you can't control what other people do. I mean, anyone could go on there, you know, and do it. So they, they, you can't crash a campaign. You can't crash a case. I mean, if there's anything wrong with it, then, you know, it, it's for the, the local council or the government to, you know, set them aside. 38 Degrees aren't in a position to intervene in other people's campaigns. They wanted to have a website that facilitates campaigns. And um, that's what they're doing. But they, you know, they're on the website, but they own a website that they're publishing material that is protected and got special rights that can't be intervened in. I mean, if they they're in the wrong business, if they want to take cases down or withhold people's evidence, because that's almost like you know, if someone submits a legal case to the court and then Tom, Dick and Harry comes along and takes away evidence or something, you know, or stops delivering your mail or, you know, intercepts your letters or something like that. Um, you know, they, they, they're a publisher. These things have got are required to be shared and, and they're supported by the law. There's a legal requirement to publish and stay published. So, you know, it, it, you're dealing with hot cross buns, hot cookies. You're dealing with hot coals if you're 38 degrees publishing petitions, which is a serious matter. But they're taking it serious and they're wanting to, you know, um, drop the hot coals in, um, you know, carbon um, liquid nitrogen, you know, when that's not what you do, you know, you can't drop the hot coals in liquid nitrogen because you don't have the legal right to do that. You know, if you want to juggle hot coals, then, you know, you got to be a good juggler. You know, th- this is the problem. And I don't know where 38 degrees have got it from. I think they just fell into the culture of, hey, you know, we're, we're successful. We're up and running. We've got a website. Thousands and thousands of people are joining. Uh, we're, we're ticking over now. We're rolling. We're rolling. We're successful. It's almost like Russell Brand or Mr. Beast or, you know, Vobes, you know, Vobes, you know, he's only got five. Uh, I mean, I got up to three or 4,000 people on YouTube before my channel got pulled down unlawfully. I mean, Vobes has got 5,000, then he's 10,000. I mean, I could probably have got there. Uh, but the next thing is 100,000, you know, like some of these big, big Facebook groups. I mean, that that's the thing with success. But then, you know, you get a taste for the money and the profits and then, you know, power and then, ooh, and then I don't know whether the government have been advising them, you know, like they've been advising Mark Zuckerberg, you know, you will take these certain things down. But that's the problem. This is why you need to get lawyers and this is why you need to stand up to government, not bend and break, you know. Um, you, see, you see, like, you got to pull them up and say, no, actually, this is the law. These are our rights, you know, and you're wrong. And, you know, if you've got a big website with X, you know, £100,000 ticking over, then, you know, where's Joylan Mohan? Where are these expensive, fancy lawyers, you know? Um, unless it's someone like Black Belt Barry Stroop may or may not be misleading them, you know? This is the thing. So, you know, I I, I really am kind of um, at odds with 38 degrees at the moment. Uh, they're just kind of like fanning around. They're, they're almost like, you know, on the one side of the road or the other side of the road. They don't know which side of the road they're on. They're, they're kind of like, um, 
going down a ski slope, you know, buck teeth, kind of like having a good ride, you know, like, <laughs> almost like Forrest Gump, you know, that, you know, I'm running, I'm running, I'm passing, I'm passing. They're sort of like doing well, but making a, a, a tit out of themselves at the same time. You know, I, I really, it's like Tropical Thunder or something. I really, really don't know what they're playing at. Um, and, and of all campaign groups, I think they got, one of the founders got arrested for being in possession of drugs. And that was, that had to have been a setup. One of the founders, it was on the BBC, but I can't find anything about it now when I try search. Someone high up in 38 degrees or one of the founders got caught with loads of drugs or something and he got sacked or fired or something like that. So I don't know how many people started it or specifically which person did start it, but it's, it goes along those lines, something like that. I, I watched a program on it. And then they've got this guy who looks like Mahoney from the police academy, which is just insane. I don't know which guy that is. I don't, there's a guy called Robin... Uh, who I talked to, or I spoke to him on the phone and I write to him, but I don't know if that guy is the guy who looks like Mahoney from Police Academy because he was on like he was on the BBC and he was kind of like smirking and smiling. It, 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 it's almost like um, you can't make this up. You know, he is the spitting image of Mahoney. Now, I don't know which guy he is, if that's the Robin guy or not, but he, he, he's from... Manchester area or something, but the rest of the 38 Degrees people, I think, are from down London or something. So, you know, it, 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 I've got to get this 38 Degrees sort out, whether I get a mediator. I'm looking at getting a mediator because, you know, they're... I just can't be asked talking to him anymore on the phone because I'll just end up arguing, and I don't think he wants to bother listening to my complaints when I send him in, and they're not they're not budging. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to... I am going to list it with the court, and I'm going to list it with a small claims court online, um, and you don't even have to turn up for that. I can just submit it all. I don't know whether they'll bother turning up or not. Or I'll have to go, uh, you know, a proper court, but um, you can. I think you can do it on the small claims court, And or I'm going to get a mediator, but I'm going to have to do something because they've taken him down. And it, 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 it's not just that. It's the point. I'm, I'm right. They're wrong. And they're running the platform unlawfully. And... Um, it's all my, I've put a lot of work and evidence into those before and, you know, I'm not redoing it. Um, they're, they're just being stupid, you know. It, it's beyond my control. They wouldn't, they withheld the data from me. They were unlawfully withholding people's data. They're meant to protect people's data, not protect the data from the people, um, not, not from the creator of the petition. So they're just like, you know, some people just kind of like uh, just a sandwich shot of a picnic. You know, they're, they're, they're successful. No one's doubting the success of these people like Russell Brand and so forth, but they just always seem to not quite get the point or not quite be on the ball. Although with this they are, but I mean, what, what, what are they going to do about it? The one thing they don't mention in this email is the law on this. I mean, they've told everyone that they've painted this on the floor and they've told everyone that the council have been removing it unlawfully and they've got the evidence, but why didn't they include in this email, oh, by the way, that, you know, it, it's, you know, it's uh, class C and class F and, uh, you know, um, you know that's what it makes it um, lawful to do it and why the council doesn't have um, permission to remove it. You know, that, that would have just... You know, this is why I, I get annoyed with... They always just seem to miss the critical thing out, you know, which is annoying, you know. So I really am annoyed with 38 Degrees at the moment. Um, and I, I am going to have to go get some legal help with them because they're just obstructing me and being a major pain when I've got important stuff to do. You know, I've got serious important stuff to do, like... Two of those petitions were pretty small and petty, but they're in our local area and there are lots of things happening in our local area that I need to sort out and they're really not helping. They're obstructing it. And, you know, the other, the, the third petition, the main one, the big one, is about our ancient site, which is really, really serious because it's like um, destroying uh, 
it's like United Nations religious site protection. It's like a... It's evidence of the royal family attacking our ancient heritage, basically, uh, you know, from, you know, the when the Labour Party started, Queen Victoria, to um, George with the imperial chemical industry, and then the Queen, when she got coronated and made the Queen, and they finished it off. And the Labour Party have been a main orchestrator in that. And it's all because of our area siding with Cromwell and the Liberals and because we had a really important base um, pre-Roman conquest, which, um, you know, it, it is possible. There's a very, very strong case for it being, um, you know, tied in with the Druids, possibly even, you know, like maybe where they um, trained them or something, you know, not like Stonehenge. Stonehenge is prehistoric. Stonehenge is prehistoric. Well, our site's prehistoric, but, you know, um, the the Druids were in place around the time of the Roman Empire and they actually had a proper order and, you know, it was the government of the Celts. And there's a strong case that, you know, when they had a government and they were training the 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 judges, the Druid judges, um, which operated all around the country, there's a very, very strong case for it possibly being here because it's very, very central and it's shaped like a big long barrow. And all the other long barrows around England are quite small. Um and, you know, it, it it's just it's just it it is a particular landscape which is significant symbolically and geographically to the island um, in terms of river systems, altitude, hills, convenient features and for travelling around. And it's got the actual framework for the sites there. One of them was ignored on purpose when Varley um, investigated it. And, you know, I've got all this evidence in the petition and uh, it, it, it's, it, it's legal work that's protected and 38 degrees are just um, dicking around. Um, and they're not taking it seriously. They're taking it serious on their side. They're not taking it serious on the fact that it's subverting the liberties of the realm. And But yet now they're calling the council out for all these, oh, how can the council do this? You know, how the council, look at this. Look at the council removing the the, 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 the citizens' petition work. But But then again, you know, if, if the government aren't upholding his rights, how can 38 Degrees be able to uphold his rights? But, you know, they're, they're working, they're, they're claiming they're working with us, with all this, but, but they're actually working against us. You know, it's just a complete and total shambles and some something really, really, really needs to be done about it. Um, you know, so that that's that. And that's that I wanted to talk about. Um I'm not wrong about the law, you know, um, and whether or not I get a mediator or not, or whether or not I have to go to court to prove it, but it's not just me, though. There, there might be other people who have had uh, petitions removed by 38 degrees. And then there's the whole thing with the messages. They've got this messaging system set up, but, like, if you're sending private messages that aren't... Um, you, you can't... You, you can't... Obst you... you you can't be a third party, right? Like a publisher, facilitator, role, entity, website, group, whatever, and claim to have the power to mediate and moderate people's messages that are, are, are sent, issued with a, a political right, you know? Because it's, that's like, you know, if they're private messages, then they're legal private messages, and it's not a case to 38 degrees, it's a case of the government. So what the, you know, what the 38 degrees don't have any rights to read or moderate people's private mail for legal cases. And, you know, if you're, if it's regarded as, you know, you're sending messages as part of the petition to a section of the public, then you've got the right to send that. So and 38 degrees, why are they checking them for? You know, oh, we're checking them for this, we're checking them for that. But you can check them for what you want. You don't, it, it, it's not your message and you're not the recipient. Um, you know, it, 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 you, it, you know, it's our platform though. Yeah, but 
your platform is wired in. It's like wiring in a transistor transformer and resistor into a circuit board where, like, you've got ultimate, you know, it, 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 they're trying to, uh, you know, um, resist, resist. No, <laughs> they're, they're fiddling with um, the legal circuitry and wiring of things that are beyond their um they don't know what they're doing basically and they're going to get electrocuted because you know they're dabbling with subverting the limits of the realm like max hill you know but max hill is a, a, a now a master criminal you know he, he's he, he, he's one offense short of treason because it, you know he's he's actually meant to be in charge of prosecutions yet he is blatantly you know professional negligence isn't close he's on purpose when he, he should he and he, 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 there's no reason why he shouldn't know the existence of those acts and know them inside out he's ignoring them because when you say that these both exist then you have to say, well, and what do they say? And they say you can do it. And he doesn't want he doesn't want them to be able to do it, <laughs> or have any, you know. So the thing you use a different charge, use a different act, use a different law. Well, that's you know, even though this is defined, it's an advertisement. No, it's not an advertisement. It's like it's an apple. No, it's not. It's an orange. You know. Well, if I say it's an orange, then, you know, we can eat it. We, no one shall eat apples. Well, it's an orange. I'll eat it. You know, th this is it. This is what police chiefs like doing. You know, we shall not eat any bananas. Well, I'll call it an apple then. Well, you know, uh, but it's not an apple. There's none left now, so you can't see. You know, there's a couple of crumbs. You know, th this is it. Um, and this is the thing with the um, Met Police, you know, with... Um, Lawrence Fox the other day when he got arrested, when you know when he's a political party leader and he's getting questioned, he, you know he, he can say what he wants about whatever subjects he wants, because there's hypothetically and um, also you know what what if um, he changed the law so things aren't legal anymore, uh, you know so that so they're lawful so they're not legal anymore, you know um, you know and the. The police don't like it. Um, so anyway, so that's that video anyway, discussion. So, you know, 38 Degrees, I like this. I like this, but, you know, I mean, they're causing me major pain at the moment because I've got other things to do, you know. I've got things to do, you know. I have got things that I want to be doing, but instead I've got to take up a whole lot of concentration and effort and time on getting this sorted out, and then is is the is I think he's really responsible for it or not? Because I'm having a lot of hacking on, you know, Amazon and with TuneCore and other things. There's a lot of hacks going on, which definitely are hacks. There's no mistake about it. And I've just got a feeling that someone had messed around with 38 degrees, triggering things backwards and forwards and ended up getting them to take my petitions down because I know that Charles doesn't like that petition about the ancient sites and um, it's the music that we're releasing w w concerning Charles, um, that's the stuff that's getting messed around with. So I think it's either the royals' hackers or the police's hackers. The, the, the police definitely have hackers or the police, the the coppers, um, the computer coppers, when they're not on duty, they've got loads of hacking buddies um, and they hack stuff to hinder people as much as they can. Um, and, you know, if the police think I'm lying, then, uh, you know, they ain't going to fucking investigate it because it's their best pals and buddies. So, you know, um, we really, that is going to be a difficult problem to sort out because they're not going to admit they exist um and you just know it exists because why is it the exact specific things that are getting targeted which the police really really don't like like you know my artwork in the post or every time i buy something for the campaign you know um so i, I really don't know i need to get this sorted out with 30 degrees i i it's i 
it is going to get sorted out whether they want to sort it out or not because I am going to take them to court over it and I'm not going to lose because I know that I'm not wrong um, because I'm right. I know that I'm right because the law says I'm right and I know what the law is. They don't understand the law properly. I know they don't understand the law properly because not many people do uh, because they're a sandwich short of a picnic. They're very, very good at, you know, being successful because people who are successful don't really know what they're doing too much. Even Bezos, even, you know, big, big, because they need to be able to have a certain amount of ignorance um, in order to be that successful because no one would be, no one would do that. Many people wouldn't do that. They wouldn't take that much money off people. They wouldn't take people's rights away. You know, you've got, you know, like a lot of celebrities, a lot of people don't want to be celebrities. They say, oh, you've got to have courage. You've got to be bold. You know, you've got to be confident. Yes, but that's the thing. To, to a lot of people, it's kind of stupid, you know, like excess greed. A lot of people... A lot of people don't want to be rich just because, you know, it's not the be-all and end-all, you know? This is the thing. Um, so that's that anyway. <laughs>